I'm Kelly. I'm Rich. And we are One the Rest Adventures. Bit of a shorter video this week, but we still managed to get some important things done. So this week we have been... Doing some more wiring. Painting the ceiling. And we came up with a solution to keep our diesel ducting pipes cool and our air hot. Hope you enjoy and you'll see how this experiment turns out later. At the end of last week's video, we gave you some sneak peeks. Basically, this week we're starting by installing some more cable and plugs. So, on the end of here, we're going to have a dimmer switch for our mood lighting and a switch for our water pump, which also integrates a light switch for our main living area lights. So, they're going to be switchable here and as we enter the bus at the front, so we can switch those off and on either end of the bus. Um, everywhere else we're keeping it fairly simple so we don't have to run lots of cable but for this one what that will mean is I need to run a three core wire from where this switch is down to where the other switch will be but the first thing I need to do is decide which way around to put them so Kelly and I have had a look at this and we think actually it makes sense to put them this way around A we think it looks, a, well, it looks better with the switches in and it gives us a bit more room in over here to hang stuff should we want to and these are fitted in exactly the same way as i did before so the main steps are masking up and basically marking the center points for where you're going to drill through a 51 to 54 millimeter hole and then you can mark up where the screw holes are going to go pilot hole through if you need to and then that is them basically mounted. And at that point, you're ready to do the wiring. This stuff is three core multi strand flex Arctic cable. Because we're having quite a long run of cable so, and then quite a long run of lights running the whole length of the bus, we need to account for voltage drop. And this is, this is fine to use um, in a 12 volt circuit because it's multi-strand flexible 2.5 cable basically um, I just need to mark it up obviously accordingly so when I'm running it along here I don't get it mixed up with uh, my 230 volt and run that up now into the wall so I can use that as my three core connecting wire taking it easy a bit today um, just got a few jobs to do basically before I pack up so to have to actually have some sort of Sunday off. Okay. Before I do that, I do need to drill a few holes out in this and mask up the ceiling. So in the week, we can uh, spend a couple of hours painting this. Because so basically this room in here will be different from the rest of the um, living space, which is all going to be white with, we think, some neat strip or detailing, which we're going to get into after the cabinets and stuff have been built at the top. It's nutty how long you spend creating something just to drill holes out of it. <laughs> so this one here, up here we're gonna have overhead cabinet. This one here is for uh, cables for our control panels. So stuff like diesel heater, stuff for our Victron gear. So we've got uh, switch panels control the inverter remotely. And we also have a uh, the GX Touch 50, which basically will show all of the information from how much our solar is harvesting, how much charge is left in the batteries, how long we've got on current state of um, discharge, how long it would take to charge them back up. Also, our gas level sens sensors will be on that GX and our water and waste. And then other things we'll have up here, we'll just have a switch for our gas solenoid so we can switch that off from um, from inside. But we'll be creating a neat sort of control station here. And these cables need to be run up in the wall and out into it. I was gonna put it down in here, but as you can see, it's so deep and I would be banging my head a lot to just check where it is. Whereas here, it's gonna be at eye level, which makes sense to me. Another hole bites the dust. And Kelly came out to help label up the cables and we got to masking up the end of our butch because we didn't want to get white paint all over that. Would have been a disaster. 
masked up and ready to paint. Fired up the heater for five minutes and then we've got the electric heater on out here too. Um, the girl's gonna come and paint the ceiling whilst I tinker about with some wiring down under the bed. Who's doing the painting today? Mummy and Lily. Hooray, what bit are you doing, love? I'm doing in here. In the cupboard? In the cupboard. Okay, good luck. And I'm doing the ceiling. I'm going Let's in. Let's do it. <laughs> I waved at all of our followers. Did you? You want to tell them what you're doing? I'm doing painting on this wall. Yeah. And I'm doing a very good job. So. You are doing a very good job. I did this and this. Done one coat of primer. Yeah. Well done. And I did a little bit in here. Yeah. And that's all. Well done, darling. Done a nice job of that, haven't you? Yes. Are you proud? Yeah, I'm very proud. Good. Now, we're going to move on to some other crazy experiment. Wish us luck. We experiment a lot when in during our build. Probably a bit too much because it ends up taking us a long time. However, we have noticed that our pipes get very hot and we would like the warmer air to come out at the end to be warmer still. So we put a thermometer I'm going to do some experiments and try and solve this problem. Take the temperature for the hot air coming out of the duct. I'm actually going to use the infrared gun at the mouth of the duct, pointing in basically to where the T-piece is, because obviously I can't measure the air temperature, but I can measure how hot that thing is. Um, and if the pre you know, if, if it is warmer, after the things put on, then we know that the air coming out is warmer. Not truly scientific, but we're gonna measure it in the same point to make sure it's as scientific as it can be. Okay, readings. 88.7. After about 15 minutes of it being on, we're up to around 104, 105 degrees of that pipe on the outside. So it's quite hot. Obviously we want to try and keep the heat in there and put get into the vehicle. A couple of reasons. The void that we want in behind here, we don't want that super hot. It is going to be air cooled in there and we're going to push all of that hot air out. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want it that hot. Other thing, we want the hot air to come out into the bus, obviously, because that's where we need it. So we've come up with a rather cheap and cheerful experiment to see if we can solve this problem. The insulation available looks something like this, and it is very good, but it's expensive. It's like 17 to 20 pounds, I'd say, for like a short amount. So we thought we'd have a go and try and make some of our own. So we bought some material cutters, some heat resistant outer material, and something called insole bright, which people use to line oven gloves. Then we bonded one to the other with heat resistant glue. The idea being the shiny side reflects heat, whilst the fluffiness cuts down on conduction. We've cut it as a square, and it is a square, we've just double checked. Uh, any sharp thing, that, that was great. And use this. Brilliant. Gets a bit with it as well. And now we're going to get the tube. See how big it needs to be. And then the the, one, the bought version that we had was oversized, wasn't it? So we're going to yeah. make sure these are oversized so that are easier to slide off along. Yeah, and also remember you've got to leave a, a gap there because the original one, if you look at this, this is done with an overlocker where it goes over the side of the seam and it like cuts the edge of the fabric on as you sew it, but I've not got an overlocker. So we're doing it for a normal sewing machine. So I have to take into account um, that, what would you call that, that seam as well? This cost, uh, I think, a combined total of about 13 quid. Yeah. We're going to make three of them and they're going to be 115 centimetres long. We use the cutter to make three equal rectangles. The thread we decided to go with is actually an upholstery thread, but it is UV resistant and mould resistant as well. 
been sewn and now is the moment of truth. So we've left the ample room to get it in and out. <coughs> it works! And we can go do our test. Use an upholstery needle in the machine when you do this because I had some trouble to begin with and then I slapped a needle and it was because I had just like a normal needle in there. Oh, it's large. <laughs> yeah, it's hot to the touch. I'll put this on now and then see what difference it makes. How many, buddy, It gets hotter down the bottom, mind, so be careful. Okay. I can film it, it's hard to do. Yeah, that's why we had to make them a bit bigger than it needed to be. Through that gap, so it's the same sort of condition. Yeah. Okay, full blast time. Let's see. Give it a fair whack, and then we'll see how. If this has made any difference at all, let's see. I'm hoping for a fair few degrees cooler on that. I hope. We're just waiting for it to warm up. Mm. Kelly's car, she's got all of her puffer jacket on and everything. Please, well, top, please, puffer jacket. <laughs> it is cold. Yeah, it is. That's why we want the diesel heater working. And another reason why we had to do this now is we once we've got the electric cupboard in and behind, the pipe will be behind there. And obviously, we wanted it all insulated before we do that. It's ramping up. We'll give it like five minutes, five, ten minutes. Then we'll give it a measure. See now if it's any cooler. Say it, say it. We've got it. Wow. Quite half there. Yeah, that's crazy. So that's a success, that bit, because it's, like, it's well over half the amount that it was in terms of the heat in there. So that's really good. I'm just gonna go see how much warmer, if anything, the pipe is at the other end. I believe it works. Cheap as well. Okay, we're going in now to do the inside. This is just doing everything at the minute. All the windows, but all the doors are open. Get in there. Yeah. Can we do a close up of it? Wow. I was like, wow. <laughs> cool. That's quite an efficiency gained. I'm pleased with that. Yeah, it worked. So it was worth doing, wasn't it? It was worth snapping one of my needles. <laughs> yeah. The experiment was a great success. Yeah, Kelly's done a fab job on that. And we'll leave all the materials and things that we've used down below. Hope you found today uh, interesting. Please do leave us a comment and a like. Take care, guys, and we'll see you soon. One, two, three. Bye. Bye.